Hello, selectors, and welcome to the Life Burst Podcast. I'm Andrew. And I'm cold. <laughs> you do look cold. It was raining, and we just came with a walk for the dog. Yeah, it's kind of cold and rainy here. I'm Tiffany. Uh, welcome back to the Life Burst Podcast, a We Cross podcast where we talk about all the We Cross things and only the We Cross things. I have to think so hard about that <laughs> intro. I'm really upset that that's the intro I chose for this video because it's really hard to say very mm -hmm, fast. Mm -hmm, but yeah, mm -hmm. um, welcome back to the We Cross podcast. I'm in a blanket because it's kind of rainy and cold here. I know it's kind of rainy and cold for a lot of you out there, so uh, snuggle up. Yeah, welcome to the cold winter, unless you live in a place that's always hot, in which case, enjoy summer. Yeah, enjoy your shorts, Australia and like New Zealand and you know, south the southern tip of South America. Uh, one or one Australian viewer is like, yes. Hello. Hello. Hi, that's you. <laughs> that's you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andrew. What are you talking about today? We're talking about the best car. Oh, wait, wait. I can do. I can do the thing now because I've got the the editing powers. The best cards in Reunion Diva. <laughs> the magic of OBS. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to do it live. Doing it live. Um. So, guys, bear with me. There's going to be a couple clicks on this one. I wanted this to be our first uh, set where, like, all of the cards show up, like, in this area. Oh. And as we talk about it, and we still get to see each other's face. Uh, but the problem is this set's complicated. Yeah. It, it just is. Like, it's just got a lot of mechanics in it randomly. Yeah, this is going to take some extra time and explanation. Yes. So our, our best cards that we think are the best cards. This is going to be a two-parter, mm -hmm. so please make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss part two. Yeah, and so for this first part, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to talk about the cards that are tangentially relevant, not the biggest ones that are the best. But the cards that you're going to see somewhat show up and probably the cards that you should know about, you know, kind of things to work around about, but they're not like the be-all be-all cards. Normally, we, Tiffany, you and I go through this in like five minutes, mm -hmm. but the problem is, again, these cards have complicated bits to them, so there's there's no way, and I don't want to do a disservice to meet the head judge of, of We Cross by saying, here's some cool cards, and then have people do stuff, and then, <laughs> and then, it and then it's just, it's wrong, and it doesn't work. Which, yeah, shouts out to you, Neat. Thank you for keeping everybody sane. Yeah, and, and I'm wrong. Sometimes too, guys. Yeah. Like, like most, most Sometimes commonly, most commonly in this, um, in this set, uh, in this last um, combos, two card combos video I put out, I did actually put out a wrong piece of information. I said that Oigana, when you discard uh, a card to it, uh, white, white, one of those is how you pronounce it. Mm. Uh, when you discard that card, yeah, you can to Oigana, You can go ahead and recur it back to your hand by paying an enter. I was wrong there because oh. it's a cost and it's oh. not an effect. I get that one wrong a lot, guys. Mm -hmm. Famously, uh, I don't pay for harmony costs and I and I lose my games because of it. So you know, like don't, don't <laughs> always, not always right. I just am hopefully right eighty percent of the time. Yes, <laughs> and you know we always appreciate it when uh, some of you that are smarter than us call us out in the comments and correct us because yeah, yeah. then everybody can be a little bit more right when they play the game. Correct. Uh, so without any further ado. Uh, let's jump right into it. Let's get reunioned. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so the first one here is. Let me get the. Let me do. Let me do the magic here. Window. Uh, the first one is. Uh, wish in. Wish in. It's like from the anime. It's so cool. Yes. Yeah, so this is a cool card. Uh, Tiffany, why don't you read it out? Uh, this is a piece. It's colorless. It'll cost you one with main face timing. You gain the following ability for the duration of the game. Auto, at the beginning of your main phase, if you have five or fewer cards in your hand, draw a card. So basically, turn one, you should be able to draw a card right away because you start the game with five. Uh, no, because it's at the beginning of your main phase, so you're past that point. So it's basically turn oh, two onwards. Okay, yeah. But you do play this turn one immediately. Yeah, you do. Um, and so the reason why this one's on here is one, colorless, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it's not a dream team piece, which means that... I think that's really important. I think so. I think sneakily important. Like, there are so many decks out there where you're like, okay, cool, what am I doing? And you put out some colors of your L rigs, and you're like, all right, what's the dream team piece that works with this? And you go, yeah, this one. And then you go, all right, what else do I play? And you go, I guess either Burning Curiosity or 
uh, a or or like if it's not super holistic saber, right? It's like burning curiosity or Xeno cluster. Yeah. And it's like, well, well, what else? And you're like, maybe Garden of Singularity. Like, you know, yeah, like doesn't maybe. doesn't really you don't really know what you're doing with it. So I think this allows other decks to have a, a fighting chance. Also, there's some cards, there's some decks out there that have certain colors in them that are not so great at keeping their hand full. And they kind of get just ran, ran over by by discard. That's true. Looking at you, aggro. Yeah, I think this... Most aggro decks can't hold cards in their yeah. hand for very long, especially up against a discard deck. So this one might not be a bad option for you if mm -hmm. you find that you're you're blasting through your cards a lot. Yeah, and, and speaking of which, there's another wombo combo that you can kind of do with this. I, and none of the stuff is, like, fantastic, you know? None of the stuff is like, oh, the greatest thing that's ever, ever happened. But if I pull out a piece here, I've got uh, Garden of Singularity in my hand. Now, Garden of Singularity has the ability of zero enter. Uh, you draw a card when you play this, and you get the following ability for the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, constant. As you guard, you may discard three cards instead of discarding a guard with a guard on it. Mm -hmm. Now, that allows you with this to really minimize that cost. It's basically discarding two cards at all points and times to, to guard. Can you have both of these effects going at the same time? You can. Okay. You can. Because it's you, the player, gain the ability. That it's not good. just like when the piece is active. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is kind of a, a, a little bit of a wombo combo there, where if you're like turbo drawing, you now have an out like a, a good way to make Garden Singularity a little bit more, um, a little bit more like uh, consistent. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's I think it's a cool thing there. I don't think it's the most powerful thing in the world, but I do think if you're not putting down Wish in on the same level as like Xeno Cluster, Burning Curiosity, these cards that you kind of think of in the back of your head you probably mm -hmm. should um so there's that one the next one and here comes the complicatedness is we've got uh mugen mugen q and mugen a we cross this first flip card two sides of the same card yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so can i just say mm -hmm. mugen is gorgeous she is very pretty Stunning, like glittering. Like, yeah. Look at Mugen A, like just amazing. And, and the like, the level the leveling up, level one to two. You know these cards are also very cool looking as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna read the first half, Tiff. If you'll read the second half afterwards. Which one are you counting as the first? Half? Are you doing uh, the front, Q the or A? The Q. Q. I'm gonna, I'm answering the. I'm doing the questions. You're doing the answer. Okay, sounds good. I think that's what Q and A is for. I, it just hit me that that could be the meaning. <laughs> You know, some um, things that we cross don't click until you, like, say them out loud. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> exactly. Uh, Mugen Q, it's a level three colorless uh, center uh, with the grow cost of colorless two. I say this, I know this is normally, like, pretty obvious, but it is different. This is the first time we have it. And it also has a limit of five. That is different than your normal centers with a limit of six. Uh, it has the auto ability that... At the beginning of your grow phase, uh, and I want to remind everyone, because I had to remind Jimmy today at our pre-release. It's grow, not glow. <laughs> at the beginning. Please reference, if you have any questions about that, by the way, you can reference back to our previous uh, interview with Meat, <laughs> where he does actually clarify which one it is, is in correct. fact grow. Mm -hmm. um, at the beginning of your grow phase, uh, uh, you increase the limit of Mugen Q on your field by one for the duration of the game. So it goes up to six, seven, eight, etc. You know? Um, then if the limit of this L rig is nine or more, and that includes your assists, by the way, your assists plus ones, uh, then you can shuffle all the cards from your hand, enter zone, trash, uh, and into your deck. Remove all the cards in your L rig deck and all of the on the field. So including your assists, they're gone now. Um, other than this L rig from the game, and uh, turn this L rig face down. Uh, its enter ability, by the way, is add target colorless signy from your uh, trash and target colorless or non colorless signy from your trash to your hand. All right, that was a little mouthful, but to clarify here, uh, when it enters, you get to add a guard to your hand, basically, and then add a card signy of your choice. Mm -hmm. After that, uh, as 
every successive turn goes on your grow phase, you gain one limit. Once that limit, including the, the assists, give you uh, nine, you flip this card over, you ditch your hand, you ditch the enter and the enter on your field, you get your trash. It all gets shuffled back into a deck, so you have a card, you've got your full deck again, uh, and you also ditch all of your assists. And I believe the card's under this as well. So, like, it's level zero through through three as well. It, this should be the last... This should be basically be the only thing that exists on your field at that point. So, what that you... That and your life block. It does not say shuffle your life block. It does not say shuffle your life Don't block. shuffle your life um, block. Then, then, you, uh, then you flip this card to Mugen A. Now, what does Mugen A do? Mugen A is the... Uh, Opposite side of Mugen Q. Mm -hmm. It's the level three the rig with a limit of nine. Uh, colorless, it says auto when this low rig has changed from Mugen Q to Mugen A. Draw five cards and enter charge five. Action once a turn, pay one colorless. Remove target Signy on your opponent's field from the game. Yeah, I feel like I gave you the it's easy very, one. Very, like, well. <laughs> It's very, like, final, isn't it? It's, yeah. It feels so, like, hard reset, and we're going to win the game. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, but the problem is you need to get. You, you need to get, get to it, right? And and uh, there's going to be this question that's asked, I'm sure. Can you use uh, Yuka Yuka, uh, which has the ability to increase your limit with its assist? And the answer is no, because you don't hold it at the till the beginning of your grow phase. It's till the end of your opponent's turn. So it misses on timing. Uh. Uh. Hold on, I'll get there. <laughs> just, just hold on. Oh, there's it the, broke my there's the, there's the swirly wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm buffering, I'm buffering. Um, no, I'm just trying to play through the timing in my uh -huh. head. Because this says uh, auto at the beginning of your grow, grow phase, phase, which would be, yeah, which Yuki Yuka would come after because you grow your assist in the main phase. Right, so you would miss the trigger, you hold it until the end of your opponent's turn, and then at the beginning of your turn, it goes away, so you don't have it for your yes, grow phase. So you don't have it. So, so, uh, that one was good. literally that was my first thought. I was like, ooh, broken! And then I was like, nope, <laughs> not broken, not broken. Uh, -uh. uh so that doesn't work. Um you have to play fair at least currently with Mugen uh A. The upside this is a pretty big upside. Having a limit of 9 means that you can put a field of 333 out. And let me tell you. I mean Have you ever seen a field of Exias? <laughs> have you ever seen a field of gay bogs? <laughs> have you ever seen a field, a field of, of Polaris? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how well, to get too guess, down Polaris's. I mean, listen, you could put out a, a field of Polaris and only Harmony the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're probably going to stay on the field, and then you just up them all the next turn. You ever seen a field of Remembers? Have you ever had to pay three for any action you ever take? <laughs> <laughs> it's horrifying. <laughs> yeah, when I was reading this, I was like, dang, draw five cards and enter charge five is like... That's ten cards right out of your it puts, deck. It just puts you back in the command seat. You're like, all right, I mean, I'm back here. Yeah, it it kind of almost like Uber clears you in a way, but like in a good way. Yeah. Um, because it just like resets everything. You also shuffle, also, so you, you you theoretically immune to to getting for refresh. That's there. what I was gonna say. Is that like because you're shuffling all of your enter back in, all of your trash back in? First of all, this could save you from a refresh potentially. Um, unless you got refreshed before, which yeah, is likely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you're putting all those cards back in your deck, so the likelihood is that you're gonna have like forty cards in your deck <laughs> to start yeah, with, like and calls, then you've right? got like thirty cards to draw from. Right. Which, if you're this late in the game, you're probably not gonna deck out again. All yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know. So it's kind of yeah, that was kind of nice. I can I can say as the 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 Falaris slash uh, Ultra Superheroes player, you know that. When I go, when I go, how many cards do you have in your deck? And the guy goes, 22. You're like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> not quite there. Not quite there. <laughs> Little close, not quite there. Yeah, this will be interesting to see uh, how people play this. You know, it's always it's always exciting when we get a new break. Mm -hmm. um, 
But Mugen is especially exciting because I think she's our first colorless, the red. That is correct, she is. Um, so that's gonna be really fun. Here and here. she's like flippy. Yeah. Flippy, she's got flippy. down she's got downsides though, right? Alright. And most notably, limit of five when yeah. it first comes out. Um is difficult, right? No three three one fields. It's a two two one at best. Yeah, or or that's uh, your best field. Yeah, I guess. Or a three one three one. two. No, can't even do a three two one. No, a three one one. Right, or you could do a three two one if you grow your assist prior right. to this, which I think is likely. probably likely. So you're probably at a uh, at a at a, a, a field of six. Yeah, that's a, that's a likely scenario. I would say. Yeah. So weird to work around. Uh, second part that's kind of important to note. Uh, all of our Dream Team pieces, which are very strong right now, kind of have requirements for three colors on the field. Mugen is colorless. Ain't gonna happen. Wait, wouldn't colorless count as a color? No, colorless is the lack of color in Wii Cross. So no. So it, it does not work for Dream Team as of right now. There's gonna be some Dream Team pieces in the world that don't have this this kind of stuff. But a lot of our powerful Dream Team pieces require multiple colors and payoffs for multiple colors. This means that you're not getting those. Hmm, that's fair. Tough. Also, like, when you count it out, like, okay, so you get to your Larig on turn three, right? Mm -hmm. So three, and then when you're trying to get the limit up to nine, that's turn three, turn four, five, six, seven, yes. eight... Nine? Well, you do get plus one for both your assists. The earliest that you can oh, do sorry, this... Oh, sorry, I miscounted. So on turn three, you would have five, uh -huh. six, seven, eight. So now that's turn six, almost turn seven, that you're going to be flipping your Mugen. Well... Which, if you're going up against some faster decks, you might not... Like, that's a, that's yes, a really long game, is that's what I'm saying. totally correct. Even with both assists on your thing, the earliest you're flipping this is turn five. Yeah. That's that's how that works. Mm, you have some fast... Assist. You have to be confident in your assist because some assists I want to hold on to like until it is the bitter end. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So, so, so that's Mugen. So the downside there being that you can earliest you can flip it is turn five. That's really when the payoff is. So you have to stay alive till turn five. If you were gonna exceed at all, you gotta exceed before that turn five, right? Because then it goes away. You want to use all your enter before <laughs> before that happens. You probably want to use all your hand. Before that happens, right? Because if you get the most out of it. if you get the most bang out of your buck, it would be doing all those things, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So that is what you're trying to do with with Mugen. Mugen yeah. is going to be kind of hard to work around, but if you can pay, if you can do it, if you can make it, the payoff's going to be really, really good. Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see if the if the risk is worth the reward. Right. Okay. So the next one is. Uh, so the next one is. Uh, Alios, Alos, Alos, Alos. I think it's Alos. Alos. Paraluke. Um, I got this one, I think. Um, so, uh, it's a level three uh, blue Elrig with the following abilities. Um, whenever you discard a Signy, if you have four or more, four or fewer cards in your check zone, that's that little pocket on the side that no one ever really ex uses. It's usually the spot that I let my hand sit during the <laughs> yeah, game. Yeah, basically. It, it, it's a real zone. <laughs> it's it's just, important. Just disrespected. Uh, no, the, that sounds like a lion. <laughs> got it. Uh, it's the, if you've got four or fewer cards in your check zone, uh, you may put that Signy from your trash into the check zone. So it's not a replacement effect. It goes to your trash, Sorry, then it goes whenever into your... you discard a Signy. Yeah, whenever you discard a Signy, Goes to your trash, checks to see if your check zone has it. Your check zone is four or fewer. Um, right? Four or fewer? Four or if you fewer. You have four or fewer. So I can hold up to five, I suppose, in there, tops. Um, you put the Signy into the check zone and it chills there temporarily. Um, auto, at the beginning of your attack step, uh, target Signy in your opponent's field gets negative 10,000 power for each, or sorry, negative 1,000 power for each card in your check zone until end of turn, so it can get up to negative 5,000 in that scenario. Uh, then you can add one target Signy without a guard from your check zone back to your hand. So it's like a temporary then holding add, pen. Then add up to one target card without a guard from your check zone to your hand. Correct. Oh. It is worth mentioning that those cards that are in the check zone temporarily, are they get put into the trash at the end of the turn. Yes, it does So, say that. so they don't stay there permanently. 
You can't you can't bank them. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, it's once per game action abilities. You get to draw three cards and discard two. Basically, you get to draw three cards and then uh, you get to put two into your check zone. Is really the way that that mm -hmm. is going to end up happening. Yeah. Uh, so it is a simple enough card. It is our first Elrig that kind of plays with discarding cards. And I don't mean like discarding cards because we've had Carnival, stuff like that. But I mean discarding cards Aya. and... Yeah. Aya. Yeah. Um, discarding, more like discarding cards and giving you a payoff to do it. Sure. Um, which... But, like doing it as like a cost doing it. Right. Which, for what's worth, this uh, Paraloop also is... Um, Similar in the fact that it's it's Signy version does that. It's level three mm -hmm. does that as well. So it's a kind of a payoff for that. Uh, I think it's cool. Also, I guess worth mentioning, technically, Paraluke and Paraluke are the same yeah, lore. It's if anime reasons. <laughs> anime. <laughs> Hashtag um, anime, anime reasons. reasons. <laughs> uh, Paraluke and Paraluke are the same Elrig type. So if you, if your component tries to throw you off by putting a Paraluke, the other one, level zero, level one, level two, it can still grow into this. Hmm. Because it's a Signy type. Correct. Or an Elrig type. Yeah. It's like, a, what is that thing in Pokemon when they have like a split Tangent evolution, evolution or something or like that? Or is it called a split evolution? Yeah. Where like under certain conditions, it, it yeah, 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 yeah. becomes something different. So that's like this, which right. is cool. There, there are people who do that though, where they're like, they put this out there, and you're like, no, oh, that's the, that one, and then you get to the the the, the final girl, and you're like, like wait, no, what? No. Yeah. yeah. So, so just keep it in mind. Keep it in mind. Yeah. Um, thoughts, Tiff. Uh, my my biggest thought on this is that I do want to remind everyone that there are certain placements and zones in We Cross on the board that belong in certain places. Um, and uh. If you want to know exactly where all of these areas are, where where your deck, your trash, your la rig deck, your la rig trash, which is another real area on the board that is relevant on certain cards, like where all these things are supposed to exist in the starter deck um, that you can buy, it gives you a little like paper insert that I'm sure no one reads mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's also got the instructions on it. Um, it has like a layout of the actual like play area of we cross and where everything is supposed to be and the check zone is to the left of your life i don't know where it is do exactly. you know where the check zone is no i'm looking on our screen and trying to mirror give a mimic it's a whole thing <laughs> guys it's a whole thing i'm gonna quiz you on where all the zones are um so the check zone is actually where um Bottom left hand corner. It's the bottom left hand corner of your play area. And it's important that that's where that card goes because if you just put like, oh, I'm putting this in my check zone and you put it somewhere really close to your enter zone, people are going to mistake it for enter yeah, or your yeah. discard pile or whatever. So I just want to, I just, I want to get on my soapbox for a second and say that where you put cards on your play mat or wherever your play space we often matters. we often substitute that spot for our hand you're gonna need to not do that if you play the center yes yeah, <laughs> for I sure agree. you're gonna need to, you need to have the hand in your hand so that yeah. this can be open i it. think that it's important that when you're playing cards like this that you are very clear it is true with where things are mm -hmm. going when i was playing dredge in in magic the gathering I always made sure that my my uh, graveyard play space area was exquisite at all points in times because I play out of the graveyard all the time, mm -hmm. right? So that's just one of those combinations that you have to make as a player so that you're not a complete butt to someone. No, for real. Um, like, the, the one half of it is that you don't want to confuse your opponent. I know that some people might confuse their opponents on purpose in other card games because they're kind of jerks, to be honest. Um, but... Uh, also do it for yourself because you will forget which one is your check the, the, zone. the problem is if you if you have your check zone cards touch your hand mm -hmm. someone call a judge over to you and say nope judge they um they, they shuffled their hand in there and you can get a game lost for mm -hmm. that kind of thing so just be careful about it yeah but, i just want to like when when things get like zone specific like don't don't be loosey-goosey right. on like where you're putting things like have a system power level um here's my biggest gripe with this card 
I think you're going to have two cards in your check zone. Nine times out of ten. Mm -hmm. And negative 2,000 is just not good enough. You're not killing level ones with that. Most level ones are 3,000. 3, which means that you're going to have to be discarding your own hand, which means that you're going to have to have a ton of draw mm -hmm. as well in this deck. Which isn't out of the ordinary for blue. For blue, sure. Like, we've seen tons of decks do this already. Like, we know that um, Mililune is a blue center, likes to draw cards. Madoka loves to draw and discard. Aya loves to draw right, and discard. Right, right, right. This isn't, like, it's not a formula that we haven't seen work before. Yeah. Um, but I think you're right. I think that if you're looking at, like, the average outcome of this... It's like a little, like, it Two might be able to knock stuff out of being like 13k, yeah. but... I think it's average. It's I don't think it's it's amazing. Anything. I think you're going to need to work around a little bit to make this a little better, but I think it's fine. It is the first time we're really seeing a discard payoff in the Elrig, you know, um, in the Elrig deck, you know, matter. So I think it's got a niche. I just don't think it's an amazing... I don't think it's an amazing niche. Um... Moving along. All right. The next one is also a new center from this uh, this set. It's Aya level... Aya, excuse me. Aya. Aya. Not Aya. Aya. It's like, the, it's like from from uh, Power Rangers. That one robot that's like, Aya, Aya, All the time. <laughs> that's what I... That's, that's where my brain's at for that one. <laughs> I think that, by the way, that guy voices uh, Pinky in the brain as well, which makes it even funnier. Tom Kenny? Yeah, I believe it's 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 that guy. I'm not going to Google it right now. You all can get in the comments if I'm wrong. Or it might be the guy who does, who voices um, Zim. I can't remember. It's one, it's one of those. Whatever. Um, <laughs> Tiffany, why don't you read I I can't see. <laughs> I'll read I I. No, I'll read it. I'll read it. <laughs> All right. So this is your green level three Lurig I I showdown. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. uh, grow cost is two, of course. It's got the enter ability. Add up to one target signy from your enter zone to your hand. Auto once a turn. During your turn, when a signy from your enter zone is added to your hand or enters your field, enter charge one. Um, action, once a game, target Signy on your field gains auto. When this Signy vanishes a Signy through battle, swap the position of up to one target level, two or less Signy from your enter zone with this Signy. The enter abilities of the Signy put on your field this way do not activate until end of turn. Yes, that's a ton. That's a lot of messing with the enter zone, but that's what I I, I does. does. Yeah. Like even even her Signy version did yeah, that. Yeah, does that. And it was the first Signy version that we really saw, like kind of outside of Toolbox like box with your enter gap bear combos of switching yep. stuff out from your enter zone. So that's actually kind of nice though. Is um with the enter ability uh, out of one target Signy from your enter zone to your hand. You follow it directly up with auto once a turn during your turn when the signy from your enter zone is added to your hand, you enter turn one. So you're paying yourself back right Correct. away. Correct. Immediately. Um, so you're cycle. Well, I mean, look, I mean, you're cycling out your enter, but you're also paying yourself back. So on your first grow, it's not like a super big loss. No, no, no. In fact, I, I think it's good. I, 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 if you were to give me an L rig that says when this enters, draw a card, or mm -hmm. you give me an L rig that says when this enters, pick a card from your trash and put it into your hand. I'd say the one that picks the card from the trash, the bigger toolbox, and that I get to select from is better. Hmm. This is the same because you get the enter back, right? You always enter charge back into it. Mm -hmm. But you also get to toolbox with your enter. Mm -hmm. And I like that. I think that's good. Mm -hmm. um, for any of you guys who are like, one... Why is this card crooked on the screen? You try to crop it out of Facebook. Uh, and two, <laughs> if you're saying, why aren't you guys talking about the Rizonas? God, we'll get to it in a second. We gotta talk about the thing Again, first. Again, this, this video comes in two parts. Please make sure I, you subscribe so you don't miss the second part. Here's me putting the soapbox on real quick and stepping up. Oh, sorry, this is a soapbox. I, I don't know why they were like, let's take all the complicated mechanics and just 
shuffle them in a box and put them all in this in this set. All in this like, one set. Dude, guys, I need <laughs> a learning curve. Guys, it's a lot. It's a lot of weird stuff. It's got weird Lancer at the well, end, maybe too. Maybe figured if they introduced these, like, all at once, then it's not like, oh, this one thing that's yeah. got, like, this one Larig with this special ability, then everyone's going to use that one, and then it's just kind of, It's just, know. okay. I don't know. It's a lot. Uh, so, so... <laughs> I'm not a game dev by trade. <laughs> talking about this specifically. All right. The biggest problem with green enter toolboxing is you have to spend enter to get it. And I, and I mean that in a literal sense. To take the card out of your enter and put it in your hand costs you one enter because you don't have that card in the enter anymore. So if you spend enter to do it, it's even worse. And then most, you're actually spending two right. to get a card back to your hand. And that's terrible, right? Even if it's okay. But the problem is, like, you could do that in black for a way better. Um, oh, that's true, yeah. Black almost does it for free. Though. Does it for free, and also your trash is arguably bigger than your enter most of the time. Um, yeah. So it's, it's not great, is what I'm getting at. But being able to enter charge and repay itself suddenly makes it a net neutral, which means that suddenly it's pretty okay. Mm -hmm. And green really does lack ways to get card selection. Mm -hmm. So this suddenly is actually pretty good I, in the color yeah. itself. I think that um, you can see like a lot of abilities like mirroring themselves across certain colors. So for instance, red, when it comes to removal, it usually does like, I don't know, like 5,000 or less, yeah, 10,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. or less, whereas green says to banish things like 7,000 or more, or right. 10,000 or more. Like, it's always a this or more, this or less. Yeah. And I think that this green's answer to trash recursion from black mm -hmm. is uh, reusing stuff from your inner zone, which I don't think is that bad no. of an of like kind of a an echo, mm -hmm. quite frankly. Um, but I agree with you. I think that having to pay yeah. to do it is like now you're just doubling the cost. Also, so this is a really good. This is a really good balance. My only concern with this is it sounds like you're taking a lot of cards out of your deck to do this. That's correct. Yes, you are absolutely. That would be my concern, especially with especially with the current meta. Like everybody is decking out at least once. Correct. So is this Don't just going to get twice. you there? Yeah. Like, is this just going to get you there faster? Like, yeah. I think you, you need know. to be careful. I think that's the answer is you just always are kind of careful. If you're good enough at it, you can just, potentially avoid just it. Just get good. <laughs> uh, as uh, Well, I mean, yeah, it's a concern and it's a, it's a skill that you need to learn if you're going to play uh, I, I. Um, I will, I will say this though. It's once per game is weird Lancer. Like that's literally what you got to read it as. It's just very weird Lancer. Yeah. Can you read it for us again slowly? <laughs> sure, and just sure, sure, sure. Explain yourself, All right. sir. Target Signy on your field. You pick one. Games, when the Signy vanishes a Signy through battle. Lancer. Um, it, you, you, you vanish that Signy. It's gone now, right? Then you take this Signy and you swap it with target, well, uh, target Signy on your, on your enter. Has to be level two or less. And you swap them. So the card that vanished the Signy goes into your enter. You pull a card from your enter, you put it on the field. I.I. presumably triggers and you enter charge. Um, this Signy is up. It's not coming to the play down. Specifically, it's coming up. Which means that there's no Signy in front of it now. You can dank down it with the attack and you can damage the opponent. Right? So it's weird, mm -hmm. like, weird Lancer. Weird Lancer. Um, I will say this if you want to maximize it. Ooh. Right? If you give something, let's say, I don't know, Barbarian, which seems to be a good card coming up from the set, with Lancer, you vanish something, you get your Lancer trigger. Right? Mm -hmm. You swap out something. You're not going to get the enter abilities of whatever you bring in. Sometimes it's good, because there's, sometimes there's negative, <laughs> there's weird enter abilities that are negative, like discard a card from your hand. Yeah. You've got to get around that. I don't think the payoffs are really there to, to, to make a deck out of that, but I'll say this. Constant abilities or auto abilities are still there. So if you take something like, I don't know, a Parajulius or an Osagetsun from, and I can't take an Osagetsun because it's level three, but let's say you take a Parajulius out of, out of your enter, you put it on the field. Now you have an open lane. You attack with your Parajulius, you enter charge because of Ai's ability just now. 
You can Which vanish... you will absolutely have the enter for right. in this deck. And you can vanish something else in a different lane. So it's another way to sort of like chain opening lane effects. I think that's your best way to pull out I.I., by the way. It's something something along those lines. Mm. Yeah, there's some combos to be had, is what yeah, I'm trying there, to say. There is some combos. There, Sorry, there is some. <laughs> There are some combos yeah. to be had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so take it as it is. I think on its own, this center is good. I'm excited for her. Yeah, I agree. We're not done I, talking I about agree. her, apparently. I, I agree. I, I agree. <laughs> but we're we're not done talking about her, apparently. Oh, no. Here's where it gets weird. <laughs> we got, res we got Rizonas in, now. <laughs> Okay. Strap in. So I've swapped this one over to the full screen for us, mm -hmm, Tiffany. Mm -hmm. We've got Rizonas. We need to talk about Rizonas. Are I want? To, uh, we'll we'll talk about what they do here, and then we're never gonna talk about them again in a video. And if you ever want to find out what they do, go back to this video. <laughs> I don't want to do it again. <laughs> Rizonas happen when you when you play your level two of your your Elrig. You reveal both Rizonas to the opponent. Then you go ahead and you take. Uh, one of secretly pick one of those Rizonas. They get added to your Elrig deck. The other one goes away forever. You'd have to show both, though, right? You do have to show both when you grow into level two. Yeah, but you don't have to reveal which one you're putting in your Elrig deck. Correct. You have this now, uh, this this level three. It's now in your Elrig deck now. You did, your opponent doesn't know which it is. If at the end of the game, Neat can get in the comments and yell at me if I'm wrong about this. Please do. If at the end of the game, you have not played this single card that's chilling in your Elrig deck. You must reveal it. <laughs> it is really important because theoretically you could win the game without playing it and then go, cool, I win, and then start shuffling up and the opponent can then go, judge, and the judge come over and go like, he, he didn't show me his Arizona. It says it on the card. That's why I'm trying to say it, guys. It says it on the level two. Um, you need to show it. And if you don't, you might get an infraction for it. So I, I, I don't, yeah. don't. I just want to stress: show it at the yeah, end. Yeah, we're of the getting game. into GP season. You, you do want to be really conscientious. Play by problems. the book. Well, also because like this is getting weird. Like I know, I the, know. The the sig the sorry not the well the signies well yeah, whatever the larigs are getting weird. They're getting real wild. Right. So this is a craft, which is just like. Uh, a a Mel's things that she had. She also did crafts. Well, I believe she did accessories. Yes, but I believe they were technically crafts. I I don't have the accessories in front of me to. to I'm, do it. I'll look it up. I'll okay. Look it up. I'll look what. Um. This card can exist as a card in your Elric deck. It exists as a card on the field when you play it in one of the Signy zones. These do not exist as soon as they get bounced. If they get bottom decked, if they get put into enter, if they get vanished, if they get negative effect. If any way removes them from the field, they can swap lanes. If anything removes them from the field or the game, they're just gone. They're removed from the game. So they, that means if they're going to any if they're going to any zone, any if they zone, get vanished, removed from the game. If they're bounced, removed from the game. Trash, removed from, like they just cease to they exist. They cease to exist. They are derezzed. De they are they are Tron de rest. <laughs> um, they do not exist anymore. Okay, cool. We've talked about what these signies specifically do when they when they get created. Let's go ahead and not talk about what they are individually. We've got um, Merry Go Ron. <laughs> it's a Merry Go Round. <laughs> it's just Merry Go Ron. Um, it's just the first time I'm reading the English. Copy. These are crafts. Yeah, they are crafts. Mel's Mel's things. They're called crafts. Yes, it's a type. But you attach it as an accessory. Accessory. Well, an accessor or whatever it's called. It's it's called an accessory. Yeah. But um, it's it's shorthanded into A C C E, which means that it is a craft, but it is different correct. than the Rizonas. This is a Rizona, if anything ever were to refer to a Rizona in the future. It is yes. a craft Rizona. Okay. Merry go round extreme green extreme play. Um, I think her whole thing was that she was playground equipment and stuff like that from the old Yeah, old I think, stars. yeah. So, uh, the emerge conditions means that in order to play this, you need to meet the emerge conditions, right? Which oh, is yeah. main mm -hmm. phase, you are needing to put two signy from your hand or enter. And or. And or enter 
to your trash. They have to be Signy. You cannot pay for them with spells. That's what it says right here. Mm -hmm. Which means that you can do two Signy from your hand, a Signy from your hand, and a Signy from your enter, enter right. or two Signy from your enter. Correct. Any any of those those any combos. Reason, whatever. Uh, it has the following abilities. Auto. Whenever the Signy attacks, you can add up to one target card from your enter zone to your hand. The next auto ability is when the Signy leaves the field, you add up to one target Signy, one target card from your enter zone to your hand. So both of those could be spells, for example. It's enter abilities, you enter charge two. Okay, cool. Moving on to the next one. You want the next one, today? I want to say she's pretty before we move on. Okay, we can, we can say she's pretty. She's so pretty. She's pretty. She's pretty. All right, moving on. Uh, so the other craft that you can get with II is Azure Hard Green Extreme Play. <laughs> hard. Know, I don't know why it's hard. So it's, it's so so cool. <laughs> like it's just so hard, you know. Um, all right, and she's uh, she's a twelve thousand level three Signy um, with two auto abilities, no enter ability. So its emerge conditions are different than uh, Merry Go Round. And hers are put three Signy from your hand and or enter zone into your trash. So this one's going to cost you more to play. It's going to cost you one more. Correct. Um, auto ability, once a turn, when a Signy on your field vanishes a Signy on your opponent's field through battle, enter charge one. Auto, whenever this Signy vanishes a Signy on your opponent's field through battle, up this Signy. Mm -hmm. So the first one is when a Signy on your field vanishes a Signy. And the other one is when this Signy vanishes a Signy. So there are two different abilities, but they can both trigger um, in the same turn. So that's Azure Hard. Which Correct. one, which one uh, are you kind of leaning towards? Uh, also, the, the, the typing War Tone Amuser. What, Muser's, Amuser's my favorite. Signy Why? Type. I just think they're cool. Oh no, I like tricksters. I like tricksters and yeah, abusers. I like both, tri both of them I think are cool because I think they're, they're tricky. They're and also tricky. like code mazes are really cool. That's a you thing, but you can have it. You like moving around them, Sydney. You like Sydney. It does that. nothing you for like me. Sydney I, that job. To, I, I just, I need to give up on it. Um, the dream will never come alive. <laughs> uh, which one am I leaning to? I think they're both really, really good. Yeah, um, what, are, what are some pros and cons? Ma Merry-go-round uh, has a immediately paybacks itself you pay your two enter you get your two enter mm -hmm. um and then you also get some deck selection when you play it it's good if you if you need to have toolboxing outside of the toolboxing it doesn't do much for you but if you are looking for cards that are helping you gain some form of card advantage merry-go-round is a very easy answer right because arguably you enter chart you pay two enter you enter charge you paid for itself. Mm. When the Signy attacks, you get a Signy from your enter zone to your hand. Aya triggers. Aya triggers. You get an enter back. So you basically enter charge yourself back for it. So it's a free toolboxing mm -hmm. Signy. It's not great because it just doesn't do much outside of that. Mm. Um, but some decks would just kill to have a access to a level 3 Signy at all points in times, even if their hand's at zero. I mean, maybe. My issue my issue with Mary, I'm just going to call her Mary Ground. Um, my issue with Mary Ground is I think that she is secretly more expensive than she lets on. Mm -hmm. um, and here's my reasoning. Is you put two Signy from your hand or your enter zone into the trash just to summon her, let's say. Yes. So let's say that you don't have any cards in hand. Yes. That's fine. You In, in an II deck, you probably have the enter for it. So you pay two from your enter. Mm-hmm. And then auto, whenever the Signy attacks, uh, add up to one target card from your enter zone to your hand. You're now at three enter. But I will trigger and pay you back one. That's true. Um, once. Correct. And when the Signy leaves the field, add up to one target card from your enter zone to your hand. That's two. Right. Or that's four. I yeah. agree. That's four. Um, I mean, when you enter, you do enter charge two. You so that brings it back I mean, down to okay. two. And then II triggers once. So you, you so really only cost one enter. Okay. But you're, yeah, I mean, I mean, you're doing that just to like get a bigger hand, really. Right. Um, and then with Azure, uh, it costs you more to summon her on the 
first half of it. Yes. Um, but you can enter charge one. Immediately, pretty immediately. much. Immediately. Well, you enter charge one when any signal on your field vanishes a signal yeah. through battle. And you're assuming and then, that this one probably will do it. See, that is that is. Let's give it. Let's just let's just make it easy on ourselves. You're getting an enter back for it. Sure. But you you've spent three three cards. Either so those being cards in hand or enters. So on on the first turn with Azure out, hopefully you get two turns out of her. Yes. Um. Now you're down to two. And then it says, whenever this Signy vanishes a Signy on your opponent's field, this Signy this up this Signy, which means that this also gets weird Lancer. It does get weird Lancer. It gets yes. a, it gets kind of a roundabout Lancer. Yeah. Um, but it also gets a Lancer that can potentially win a game because it's not Correct. Lancer. So here's a hint, guys, and you'll see this when I do the the deck breakdowns. I'm going for double green with this this deck specifically so that way I can I believe it's her that I'm going double green with, so I can give her. Lancer with Dance of, Dance of the Lance. Giving Azor... Dance of the Lance? It's a obscure card, I know. From set two, I think. D you have to have two Elrigs on your field that are green. Is this a piece? Yes. And then you can pay two <laughs> two green... Two green enter, I'm looking and you can up. give tar two green Signy on your field Lancer till end of turn. I'm... She works very... That works very nice with Aya. It sounds like you're talking about future code. Nope. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I've got to look this up. Just How did this dance. get by me? Go ahead and check out Dance. Stop it! Yeah, it's there. How have we not been playing this? Because why would you play two Elrigs that are dare... green? That's bad. Do you not know who we are? <laughs> I get it. I agree. I play Bang. I already get the, the Lancer. Yeah, it's cool. It's a cool piece. It's a reason to play Double Green. That's about it. It's the only reason to play Double Green, other than, like, Mel. But this is, arguably, this is this is the best set for Green. Green has a lot of things going for it in this set. Green wave. Um. Anyways, this is all to say that giving this Lancer means that you can get weird Green Double Crush. <laughs> so my gob has been smacked <laughs> azor arguably does not pay for itself really you basically it really pay you, back, you, you basically are are paying two whether those are two cards in your hand or two in 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 the inner um but it gives you this insane payoff where you're basically doing any words from two extra damage from it Mm. That's good. That's if you can keep it on the field. Yeah, but it's good. I think so. I no, mean, I mean, I mean, if you give it Lancer, you get your two extra damage. Is what I'm trying to say. But you're trying to give this thing Lancer. This thing, you read this and you're like, mm, Lancer. That's that's what you think. I like me when I read Polaris and I'm like, mm, Lancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're rude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to win the game, and this that's a way to win the game right there. This is basically giving you Super Lancer. Yeah. It's good. It's good. I'm just saying it's good. Yeah, I mean, this... this, Yeah. Are there... I guess, I guess we're being cruel, by the way, when we're talking about this, because we're also forgetting something. I, I just realized this. Someone's screaming already on, about our video about Can this. Can you hear the keyboards clicking? Okay. You are paying three cards for this. You're getting Enter Charged 1. For, for this, so so you're paying two cards for this, mm -hmm. right? But this is a Signy itself, and you gained it for free. So you're not really losing. You're, you're kind of gaining. You're kind of gaining a card with that. You see what I'm saying? In it itself counts as a Signy that's on the field. Therefore, you kind of do go up one. Because just in terms of raw card advantage, you're gaining. Yeah. you're gaining a yeah. card. Yeah. Yeah. So if you discarded a card to this effect. You 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 still have a card to play. It's a kind of a one for one. Uh, I'm saying it's exact. I know that you're usually pretty right when it comes to philosophical card, card costs theory, yeah. and card theory. I'm just I'm gonna argue a little bit and say no because just because it is so impermanent like that's yeah. kind of the tricky thing about these results you're right you lose an enter it doesn't it doesn't go into the flow as it were it doesn't go back it doesn't get recycled it just kind of like disappears so 
the worst thing that could happen is that you go through all this trouble to play this, and then someone is just like, vanish target Signy. Yeah. So, and then you don't even really get that that much out of it. But that's true with all the Rizonas. So while, yeah, you're gaining a card, you can just as equally lose a card. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's just my point. Yeah. Let's let's get back to it, because we've got about a bajillion more of these to go. Uh, and we are already at 50 minutes, so just to speed it along a little bit. Uh, the next one we're going to be talking about... Oh, God, this is a multi-card thing again. <laughs> There's so many annoying ones. Um, all right. The next one's going to be uh, Carnival. It's a carnival uh, line. A cis line. A cis line. Um, I don't think this is great, but I think it's okay. Um, this is carnival grudge, carnival attack at level ones, and then your level two is carnival sin. This is kind of an interesting chain here. Uh, carnival attack is your pretty normal vanished target signature luffs. Uh, it's a luffy though. Yeah, it, well, yeah, it vanishes something, right? Yeah, when it just vanishes. Level one vanishes something. doesn't give you any of the extra thing. Colonel Grudge is interesting because it's kind of Red's first real card advantage card that you can do. It's strange because it's enter, look at the top four cards of your deck, put up to two Signy from among them into the field. So you can't future plan with this at all. They also it's, don't go into your hand. Yeah, they literally just go into the field. So they, when you play this, you got to bear in mind whatever your limit is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you put the rest of your bottom deck in any order. So this is green. This is this is red's first dig and card advantage level one outside of X, um, with n- the drawback being that it's interesting is is what I'm trying to get at. Right. Um, yeah, we've never really seen anything that's like scry and immediately put it onto the field. Like, right. To be clear, these cards do not get to go in your hand. No. As in you, but. Put your hand down. Yeah. You look at the top four of your cards. They go directly into and play. And then they go directly into play and then right back at the bottom of your deck. Right, right, right. So, so the, then the level two here is an interesting one. It's got attack phase timing. Uh, for two enter, you can target Signy will either gain Assassin or Lancer mm-hmm. or, or can attack. Mm-hmm. And then you can pay an extra two. It can gain assa- another Signy can get Assassin or Lancer or can attack. Yeah. It's, and then the bottom block of text is just explaining what those things yeah, yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 without getting too in depth onto this one, because we don't really need to, I don't think. Yeah. It, it. This is this is a very wacky red line. Why this is notable is red doesn't normally have access to these types of effects. So there's some scenarios where like I wish I could splash red in. Hmm. Actually, I could splash red in if I do this carnival. Mm-hmm. Keep it in the back of your mind. I don't think it's very good. Most of the stuff would better serve you if you just play a different colored assist Elrig, which sucks, but is what it is. But mm-hmm. that's a way that you can get around color restriction rules and potentially still have some defensive slash utility that mm-hmm. you might not normally have. The fact that it can be aggressive and off the- defensive at the same time, depending on when you play it, is also very interesting, right? Because you get into these scenarios where the opponent is actually going really slow mm-hmm. and you're like, I actually don't need to have a two stop. I'd rather have aggression. And yeah, you can, you'd rather you like that. try and go for a win. Yeah. Or push some damage. I agree. Um, I think that, you know, Carnival has always been this interesting mid-range red <laughs> where we usually see mid-range as black or mid-range as green. Yeah, yeah um, exactly. Carnival is a mid-range red. And I think that this card is very true to her in mm-hmm. that fact because you can do either or. Yep. Um, and I like that it's got the flexibility of main phase and attack phase timing. Yep. I mean, for obvious reasons, right? Like, you mm-hmm. don't want to main phase the significant attack that doesn't make any sense. But a lot of other cards, like, you wouldn't have had that choice. Yep. It would have been, like, main phase, give something assassin. Yep. Or attack phase only, the Signy cannot attack. Mm-hmm. So I like that it's really flexible like that so that you as a person that understands mid-range timing can make the best decision for yourself. Yep. And moving along, speaking about the next red card we have, we have uh, Ex Memoria, Phantom Spirit Queen Outcast. Uh, This has, uh, again, this set loves its complicated weirdness to it. Uh, It is a level three uh, Signy that has 10,000 power, at the beginning of your attack phase, you may put a red Signy underneath this into its owner's trash. If you do, vanish target Signy 
with power on the opponent's field with power 10,000 or less. Uh, its other ability is auto when this Signy is vanished outside of uh, your main phase. Um, the target opponent puts a card in their enter for each card that was underneath this Signy. When it enters, you can put up to three Signy from your enter zone into Ooh. under the Signy. So this is a strange one. There's the twist. Yeah, and and so I want to remind everyone, this is under your your Signy, not attached. Under. Oh yeah, actually, let's since we were talking about zones beforehand. Yeah. Let's talk about the difference between under and attached. So I'm gonna need two cards. Can I just have two of any Yeah, cards? sure, sure, sure. Let me put the... Oh, no single thing is still up there. Go for it. All yeah, right. take any card you want. All right. Um, I'm just going to... These are two random cards, so please don't look too far into this. Um, there's nothing in We Cross that says how you show that a Signy is attached. All right? So let's say, like, here's your Signy. This is just an example. Don't pay attention to the text. This is your Signy, right? And then we have a card over here that, let's say, it's like an accessory or what was the thing that we were talking about? Soul, whatever. Souls, whatever. Things that get attached. Most people, and they're totally fine in doing this, just say, there, it's attached. Because <laughs> that makes sense. You don't really have a lot of space on your board sometimes. Um, so when we talk about cards that say, put this under a Signy, we mean... It's underneath. It's, yeah. It's underneath. It's the same sort of um, it's the same sort of language that is used with your Larigs. So when you're talking about exceed costs, you're taking cards that are under your Larig because they are physically like underneath your Larig. Mm -hmm. But for things that are attached, um, while someone might say that like this is something getting attached to a Signy, um, you know, this could also mean attached. That could mean attached. Uh, that could mean attached. Like there's not there's not like an actual mm -hmm. thing. And please get in the comment section down below if there's like a legacy thing that I'm missing. Um, but do be aware of that when you are playing cards that say under attached, whatever. Right. And be mindful of what your opponent is doing as well, because it can be hard to distinguish the two in the middle mm -hmm. of a GP. And it will matter when you know you're banishing something or saying take cards out from under this and it's got an accessory on it yes. which means that that card does not actually go anywhere because it's not technically under it right this is what we mean by saying like this is how this is where it gets this spaghetti. is the weird set this so, is the spaghetti set yeah, so why we're splitting into two episodes because there's just no way to talk about the set without splitting into two episodes yeah. so so the reason why this is on the cards to watch out for list it's not huge not re super relevant but there's a niche for it this is one of our first level threes in red that vanishes something big, bigger. Um, well, it says 10,000 or less. Right, 10,000 or less is big in, I, in It red. is big. Uh, most, most red goes up to like 5,000, you know? So so this is this is kind of worth mentioning there. Um, and it only costs like an enter to do it, right? Uh, and it has it when it attacks, which is arguably the best kind of timing for on a Signy Vanish. Mm -hmm. Which some of the enter. So, so this card is good. In that scenario, the enter burn stuff is less good. It's worth mentioning. You can put it there. It's kind of nice that it does it. Uh, it has a weird, it's weird timing, which means it's tough to Xeno cluster away, which is kind of nice. But it is not the greatest part of it. The best thing to recognize is that this can vanish things that are bigger in red that it, than, than red can normally do in its mono red sort of world. Mm -hmm. um, it also is able to kind of do it when it's splashed into a deck that has a little bit of red in it. So it's kind of worth mentioning there too. Uh, it's a splashable card is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. Not really super great. Moving right along. All right, moving uh, on to the next one. We've got Remember. Uh, we've got a lot of text on this one too. I know everyone's tired of seeing Remembers. This one, you're only ever going to see it in a coin deck. If your deck has coins and is potentially running blue, this is a pretty good coin payoff. Um, it's level three, blue signing. Has the, at the beginning of your attack phase, you can declare a number, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a signing with that same number, you get to draw it, right? Um, I guess you deck technically don't draw it, you add it to your hand so it doesn't trigger draw effects, for what it's worth. Um, it does say add it to your hand, not draw. It does not say 
draw that card. Correct. So um, here's the fun part. That's a 50-50 or whatever it's going to be. You're never really going to be super <laughs> super on top of that a one. Little it's game. just it's just there. There's nothing really super consistent about it. Um, its better part is the fact that when it enters, you can spend a coin, you can freeze target signal on the opponent's field, and then you can other enter ability, you pay a blue, uh, return target level two or less frozen signal to the opponent's hand. That's what it's going to be. It's bounce in blue. And it's a good proactive payoff for freeze decks. Actually, yeah. So you're only going to see it in coin decks and freeze decks, and in both of those decks, it's good. Yeah. I don't. There's Actually. not a ton of coin decks. There's Aya. There's not a ton of freeze decks. There's basically none now. I'm Tomago, I guess. But there's these are the the ways that you're going to see it. Yeah. Um, I can also see this being paired like as. Not really a combo, but just like a cute handshake between cards. It's like maybe you pair this up with um, with a Haket yep. so that you can, you just get to know what's on the top. Yeah. And like, ooh, maybe it's a guard. Yeah. Like that would be yeah, yeah, yeah. nice, wouldn't it? So. Yeah, the main drive is dealing damage. If you get the secondary effect to drawing cards, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, also, cute art. I love this art. She's so pretty. I love the colors. Yeah, I like the cards too. I actually like the cards that she's throwing out. Those light burst cards. Yeah, those are fun. Wait, are... I want those card sleeves. All right. I want I want the backs of those cards. That'd be fun. Dragon shield, get on it. Get on it. Um, okay. So the next three I'm gonna do in rapid. Actually, the next four I'm doing in rapid fire because they're all there for the same reason. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to call. Some of these are in Japanese. Uh, yeah, but. Not they have they have they have English they have English translations. So oh, I meant the name. Oh yeah, I don't. Know I know the so. first one. I don't. I can't remember the second one. Uh, I don't. I don't, I don't remember what they are off the top of my head. Hey, okay. Look, look, look. <laughs> Anyways, I'm getting down a bog to it. All right, look, I was trying to get the cards to you. The card list is only ever updated like a hundred years after the set comes out. <laughs> this is the best you can get. Um, so we are the first one is uh, these are all things that deal with tribes. That's why they're 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 all put together. Tribal signies. This is our tribal tribal set. These are tribal payoffs. They are good. Does that mean that you should run a deck because they exist? Absolutely not. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that they're not there to consider. <laughs> all right. I these are none of these are H two O. All right. None of these are atoms. All right. But for the people and you know who you are that are like, damn. I'm gonna run Terra Beast Tribal forever. Okay, here's a pay attention. These are for you. These are for you. <laughs> uh, the, so the first one here is a Terra Beast uh, level three green Signy. It has the enter ability of look at the top three cards of your deck, put up to two Terra Beast Signy from under this, uh, or from your deck and put it under this Signy, put the rest on the bottom in any order. Uh, action, you can take a card from under this Signy and put it into your trash. Uh, target singing on your field gets plus 3,000 power till end of turn. That's pretty okay. It's kind of nice, though, because you put it on this 13k, that means it doesn't get vanished by negative 12 effects. Cool. Um, the real thing is its action ability, which is you can pay green, put a card from under this into the trash. This signy gets Lancer till end of turn. Dope. What was one of the things that we were saying green was missing? <laughs> On demand Lancer. Yeah. On demand Lancer. Now I'm gonna give you guys the 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 number that you have to have in your deck to hit the... one Terra Beast off the top of your three. It's about 14. <laughs> so it's still a real investment. You need to have so Terra Beasts. We're looking at like a red green Terra Beast there? Correct. There's really no other ways around There's it. Not a like, like you're the, just running zoo. The the lightest Terra Beast package that exists in decks right now is uh one buffalo, three um three thoroughbred and three uh tangus. Look at that off the top of my head. That that is seven cards. So with these also added in, I suppose that's another four cards let's say you're going nuts with it there's like well aren't there some like multicolors there's there some multicolors i'm just talking i'm just talking about the latest package that you can do okay. you're at you're at 11 cards so you still need to fill, find in the last three it's not too difficult but it's there um 
Next one is this, uh, I'm sure it's types Y somehow, something. I can't remember the ex exact uh, beginning name here, but it's Venom. Hey, look, Venom gets their chance in the sun now. Cool. There are some cool Venom cards. There are some cool Venom I like Venom cards. Venom cards happen to be blue-black. I like both those things. Mm -hmm. Sorry, black, green. Um, it's a level 3, 10,000 power Venom tribal that has auto. Whenever the Signy attacks, you may pay bl black and exclude three Venoms from your trash. If you do target Signy on your opponent's field, it gets negative 10,000 power until end of turn. That's a lot. Most of the, the level 3 black kill things are like 3,000 to 5,000. So 10,000, kind of huge. Um, but on its own, that wouldn't be good enough. However, enter discard a Venom, Signy. Opponent's Signy gets negative 5,000 power. Mwah, I love it. Yeah. Any day. I'll That's take it. Good. I'll take it. I don't like that you have to exclude those cards from the game. But I'm already dis I'm already discarding the Venom signies and, and now they're going and I'm taking them out of the trash. Yeah, but you can't just like that I don't know. You're right, you can't toolbox them for later. This yeah. is just this is just kind of a payoff for discarding and stuff. And when you refresh, like you, you get three less cards. That's true. You're not wrong. These are these are considerations. However, I can give negative fifteen for one one black enter. That's pretty good. I mean, <laughs> it's spaced out across two things. That will deal with any problem. Right, you can kill a level two and a level one easy with yeah, these two effects. You know, that's you'll get an Osa. This is a whatever Osa decides to pump. To right, this is a single signy. For what it's worth, a single signy that opens up two lanes. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's a pretty good. Oh my god, don't. <laughs> Moving on! Uh, but you need to be a venom. Here's the thing. You need to be a venom. And you need to be more. You need even more than, than 14. You need like 23 venom cards to pull that one off. Just have all venom. Yeah, it's a lot of venom. That's, I don't, I don't know if you got the, I don't know if there's the card pool to support that, but. You got Yuzuki, Memoria, Water Phantom. This one's an aquatic beast. If if them land beasts weren't working out for <laughs> the you. The terror beast didn't work. Maybe you're into fish. I think they're fish for the most part. I guess hey, they there are be... actually some pretty good aquatic beast cards out there. There are. Not, yeah, not some pretty good it, ones, like but... Devil Stinger. And this one, this I think, I think Devil Stinger is, in fact, aquatic beast. Yeah. yeah. One of the weird ones in red, but yep. Um, <laughs> Kai Fi, that was a good one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yuzuki uh, ha is a level two, uh, which actually means I like it a little bit more because it's tough to get good level twos in this, in this world. Um, Yuzuki is a uh, 5,000 power level 2. Whenever it attacks, you can choose one of the following. Um, you can either A, reveal a level 1, a level 2, and a level 3 signy from your hand. If you do, you get to enter charge 1. I like it. Level 2s that enter charge, I'm in. Chirin, I'm in. This assumes you have a hand with a 3, a 2, and a 1 in it. Yeah, you gotta sculpt it a bit, but you can do it. You can do it. I mean, you know, if you're running Aquatic Beast, you probably have a little bit of food. That's, this, by the way, this is whole Aquatic Beast's whole thing, is that they want to see level 1, level 2, level 3. So that's, that's their, their tribal thing. <laughs> their tribal thing is numbers. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, weird. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> and then the second one is you can reveal three uh, Aquatic Beasts from your, from your hand. If you do, you get to draw a card. But you can only do one or the other. It's not like you can reveal a level one, two, no, three, no, 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 no. But, but when, it, when you're talking, you, you say, Andrew, hey. I go, hey, who are you? And then, <laughs> and then after that, he goes, don't worry about it. Would you, what kind of level two utilities are you looking for? I'm like, enter or draw. One of those two. This guy Doug, offers you both. Well, either or. It yeah. doesn't offer you both. Both. It yeah. does either or. Either or. But you can pick whichever one you, 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 yeah. you're feeling like you need. Yeah. I like it. I like that. That's good. You know who's also an aquatic beast? Parajulius. You know what Parajulius likes? Entercharging to open up lanes. God, I love Parajulius. You Parajulius are is, on a Parajulius am, kick lately. Yeah, because I because there's so many good You're green cards. A lot. What? In this set, green is unlocked. We're ready Parajulius to go. Parajulius was not part of this set. No, but there's so many good options to supplement it. Parajulius is just waiting the wings with a knife. <laughs> ready to go. Stab. <laughs> <laughs> guys parajulius is about to get very uh, like powered over after this set so let me have what i got right now sure all right moving on level two tama uh tama memoria erupting cannon yeah tama's red 
Um, it's a level 2 Signy, 5,000 power auto. Whenever this Signy attacks, if there is a downed weapon Signy to its left or right, you may pay one colorless. If you do, vanish target Signy on your opponent's field with power 5,000 or less. Correct. So it's like kind of Lancelot, mm -hmm. but conditional Lancelot. Mm -hmm. um, also, another auto ability. Whenever this Signy attacks, if there is a downed arm Signy to its left or right, you mm -hmm. may pay one colorless. If you do, put targets, put target card from your opponent's enter zone that does not share a color with your opponent's center Lurig into their trash. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, so this is almost like a dual tribal card? Weapon and armed, they like to hang out together. I mean, it does make sense. Because one's got to be a weapon and one's got to be armed with the weapon yeah uh so yes oh that's cool it's like you got tom and then one arm is a shield and one arm is like a laser cannon sure. that's fun yeah i like that um also i want to point out tom is now in every color but green justice for green justice hashtag justice, justice for, for green, green. <laughs> all right um it's interesting seeing tom in red yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. What do you think of this one? Worth it? Not worth it? Uh, cute. I think it's cute. It's cute. It's cute. You can it's, put, it's you tough. Can put this it's, in a lot of stuff. Here's it's tough to balance armed and uh, anyone anyone who can tell you who's played AS where they're balancing all stars. Yeah, legacy or legacy Signy and angel Signy in the like oodles decks. It's tough to balance it. You can doesn't mean that it's not tough. However. It doesn't mean that you can't just play this in one or the other tribal two, you know, and I just be agree. like, just be like, cool. I'm only going to use this for the the, the Lancelot esque effect, the Hera effect, and I'm going to put this in Weapon Signy, All right? And I think that's probably where it's at its best. A down Signy though. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can have. That's a tricky thing. Well, I just mean that something the weapon needs to attack before it, but um. Because oh, it's right. not entered, it's when it's it, attacked. Yeah, okay. Yeah, actually, the timing does work out then. Yeah, I agree with you, though. I would say that this is an either-or. Like, you're not you're not going to run a weapon and armed tribal deck. Right. It's, you know what? I wouldn't say it's impossible, because at least then you're working off of two tribes instead of one, so sure. you have a little bit of a wider card yeah. pool. Mm -hmm. But I would say that this is more of, like, a cute support card yeah. if you happen to have like weapon and or armed things in your deck yeah I, arguably the weapon part's better than the, the other part i would think so too um if you're really into the enter burn thing then like maybe like if you're sure. running yuzuki's possibly yeah. yeah i agree um wait there are oh no that's a weapon though isn't flat throw a weapon flat throw is a weapon oh yeah so I don't know. Yeah, I, I kind of, out of out of the other ones, I would say that the Tama is probably the more widely playable one. Sure. Because of that reason. Yeah, I agree. Um, Last one that we're doing for tonight. All right. And that is Seven Lights. Seven Lights. <laughs> um, so. Which ironically costs zero. Correct. So, so there's there's very one single singular reason as to why this is on, this is on here. It's a pretty simple reason, which is that let's take out the exceed seven part of it okay. for the first part. It's a spell. It has a life burst. It doesn't cost any enter. That's an important part. Is that it doesn't cost any enter. Really? Put target signy that shares a color with your center L rig into your enter zone. It's a access to enter charge for not green decks so you can oh play God. this as a you sure so so you need green what to play this clearly signing that shares a color with your center of rig from your trash and your, okay so 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 yes you'll need mel or something into your in your deck or something when you're when you're playing this bang to cap or whatever whatever assists you want the important part is to recognize that for zero enter you get to enter charge one and there are but niche it's the color of your center of correct rig. there are niche case scenarios where you need that type of effect um because you just need more enter blue for example tons of cards in hand millions of cards discards cards at the end of its turn well convert that one of those into an enter you know like that's that's where it really shines mm -hmm. um and 
this every other card so far that's been like enter charge one that's been a spell or whatever has required you to pay a green to get to get some kind of enter out of it this is the first time where you don't actually really need to be running any green cards in your deck whatsoever to get access to an enter charge in your main deck in your main deck yeah, I mean, you have to run a, a L rig that's green so that you can play the card in the first place. Yeah. But it is worth mentioning. Sometimes you don't want to I splash green. So. You just want to have access to that that L rig. That's true. That's actually something that I didn't think about before. Um, when I when I first read this card, what this tells me is you're going to guarantee a grow for yourself because there's some decks out there. Like, I mean, look. Ideally, you never want to miss a grow due to no. enter enter issues this will help fix it because then you're guaranteed an enter that matches yeah. the color of your center rig so that you can get that or pay costs associated sure. with that which i think is good um but yeah as long as you have a green rig then yeah you can yeah. get any color this is this is arguably uh at its best being a a way to enter charge for decks that draw excess amount of cards hmm. you draw a shit ton of cards change it to a to to an enter right convert convert one resource into the other that's what this is at its best for uh yeah it has other things the exceed seven add two signy without a guard from your enter zone to your hand that's occasionally good that's actually better in green than exceed it is outside seven of green is a lot, exceed though. seven is one of those end game things so that's that's all of your Lurigs have to be fully grown. Correct. Thing. Yes. What about the life burst? Enter charge one, then add up to one target Sunni from your enter zone to your hand, or put it onto the field. Yeah. You know you know me. I'm always in for, for basically the Haniol on a Mirage or this type of, of life burst, which allows you to put it onto the field. Actually, if you have zero enter and you still need to defend yourself, mm -hmm. this will still save you because you have to enter charge first. Correct. So the card that you enter, let's say you have zero. Yes. You enter charge first, and then maybe you need to, you have to, you, I don't know, you're going to die. You okay. To you're on knockouts, yeah. right? You have to block a lane. You just, it was in your enter zone. Correct. Now you can put it on. Yeah. Field. I, I'm always a fan of this type of effect. Anytime that I can play a Signy with an enter ability on my opponent's turn, I'm in. Call, call me in for it. You know? I agree. Haniel coming in. Get me a guard. Let's go. <laughs> I'm fine with it. The you know, these types of things. Come and save the day. So I like the life burst too. Is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Uh, that's it's it. A nice green spell. That's it. That's it for for this go around. That's the end of part one. We'll for, see. Yeah. For the best cards that we think are the best cards in Reunion Diva, please subscribe for part two, and please comment down below uh, if you think that we missed any cards or maybe cards that you think you're going to see in part two, mm -hmm. uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And as always, may you always flip a life burst. Bye guys. Bye.